Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at the Manual Anglican Church. Uh, just a reminder that, because it's been a while since the kind of things have been bumping back and forth with my being here, and then we were at church in the park. When I come up to the front and I ring those bells, that's the cue to move into your seats and to move into a place of quiet to be able to hear from the Lord uh, as the, the music begins there. So that's just a reminder as we move forward together. Welcome to everyone that's here at Grace. Getting to be together in this way is wonderful. Welcome to those of y'all who are watching at home via live stream. I'm glad to get to have you be a part of the service as well, still in this way. Grateful to be together on this Holy Trinity Sunday. Uh, this Sunday when we, we remember that our God is one in three and three in one. You're going to hear this as a recurring theme throughout the service in our liturgy and our music, and I'll hone in on it when the sermon comes. Someone remembers the magic trick. We're going to be doing that again. <laughs> Great. All right. Um, oh, the other thing that I just wanted to mention as the service begins this morning is that we're entering into a new season in our church year. We move from Easter in the, through Pentecost, which is what happened last Sunday, into the season after Pentecost. Uh, we have our Pentecostal banners up for one more Sunday. Typically, we'd only have them up for one Sunday, but I'm going to be referring to Pentecost again today as we talk about the, the Holy Trinity and our need for the Trinity in our lives and the Spirit as a part of that. Uh, but as we move forward together, we're going to move into the season after Pentecost. The banners will change to green, and you're also going to notice in the service that we've made a few changes as well. So just be alert, pay attention. Some of them will be new to you. You'll pick up on them in the next couple of weeks and you'll just be able to join right in. Just listen as we go along uh, and join us. And join us now as we enter into worship and as we worship God, our triune God, singing the hymn I think that y'all know well, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Please stand as we sing together.
Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. And together let's pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. Good morning. The first reading is taken from Acts, starting at chapter 2. Excuse me. <coughs> I got choked up on reading this one. <clears throat> this Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, 
Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words, he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and they were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers, and all came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believe were, get, were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 13. Let's read it together. How long will you utterly forget me, O Lord? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I seek counsel in my soul and be so vexed in my heart? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes that I sleep not in death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed against him. For if I am cast down, those who trouble me will rejoice. But my trust is in your mercy, and my heart is joyful in your salvation. I will sing of the Lord because he has dwelt so lovingly with me. Indeed, I will praise the name of the Lord Most High. The second reading comes from Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 18 through 24. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them for they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festive gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. 
the word of the Lord. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Speak, O Lord, and renew our minds. Help us grasp the heights of your plans for us. Truths unchanged from the dawn of time that will echo down through eternity. And my grace will stand on your promises and my faith will last as you walk with us. Speak, O Lord, till your church is built and the earth is filled with your glory. So would like to come forward, please do come on up. Have a, a couple of things. Actually, it's going to be a reminder from a year ago. I think, actually, Kathleen remembered this. Others may as well. The magic trick, that silly little magic trick I taught you all a while back. Oh, yeah, that brings a few up. Come right up, and you can sit down right here in front of me. There we go. Y'all remember this silly magic trick that I taught? It shows my great abilities where I can take this one finger and move it up to the other hand. Isn't that amazing? And now I can even make it go back and do it with two. Wow! And I can make it go back and I can even do it with three. Ready? Ah, I always miss that one. There we go, three. <laughs> so y'all remember that little magic trick, kind of, kind of silly, but the point of it, if you remember, is I was wanting to teach you a very important truth about God. 
And then that is that our God is one God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. Do that with me real quick. Put your hands up like this. Adults, I know you want to do it. Go ahead, you can go ahead and do it too as well. One God. Say one God. One God. Three persons. Oh, we almost got there. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three persons. One God. Good. <laughs> what I wanted to talk to you about this morning, about this one God. Hi, Mary. Good to see you. There's three persons. Is that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? They have this eternal loving relationship that goes on between them. They exist as a community. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit this forever relationship in which they are forever listening to each other, responding to each other, and loving each other. They're loving, listening, and responding. It's like this dance that goes on for eternity where the Father listens to the Son and responds to the Son and loves the Son. And the Holy Spirit listens to the Father and responds to the Father and loves the Father. And the Son listens to the Father and responds to the Father and loves the Father. And it goes on and on, this eternal dance that happens. And it's important for you to know this because you... Each one of you sitting here, each one of you at home, all of y'all are sitting here, you were created in the image of this triune God, which means God wants you to grow to become more and more like him, which means you are created to dance with others. For you to be with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and you Dancing together in this eternal dance of listening and loving and responding to God and listening and loving and responding to your family and listening and loving and responding to your church family and listening and loving and responding to your friends, old and young, and especially, again, listening and loving and responding to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one who brings you into this dance. The Holy Spirit is the one who enables you to do this dance and teaches you the steps. And God the Father is the one who welcomes you in his embrace into this dance. So we have this again. One God, three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and then you, all of you, through Jesus, welcomed into the dance, to dance with God and with each other. Okay? Go back home. Go, go back, well, don't go home yet. Go back to your seats. <laughs> and I know I'm going to see you practicing that in your seats. That's fine. <laughs> it's interesting uh, that, uh, not interesting is not the right word. It's wonderful. One year ago was when my first Sunday of preaching to y'all was preaching uh, actually, I didn't preach with a mask then, but we were at All Saints, pre in All Saints, we were pre-recording the services, and Trinity Sunday a year ago was my first time of preaching to you without seeing any of you. And so I actually love it that Trinity Sunday is my first time indoors to be preaching to all of you and <laughs> seeing you in ways without your mask. So I'm grateful for that. But I'm, I'm continuing on actually doing, again, kind of a part two to the sermon from last week. Because last week we were focused on Pentecost, because it was Pentecost Sunday, so very appropriate to be talking about Pentecost. And last week we reflected on uh, how the Holy Spirit empowers mission. That we need the Holy Spirit to empower us to shine. And by shining, it meant that we can proclaim the kingdom of God and that we can bring healing into this world. This theme of Pentecost and the need for the Holy Spirit, it continues today. And that's why I had us read a little bit more out of that reading in Acts chapter 2. But what I want to focus on today is how the Holy Spirit empowers communion. We need the Holy Spirit for communion with God and for communion with each other. It's the Holy Spirit who enables this divine dance 
that I was telling the kids about. Participating in this Trinitarian movement of loving and listening and responding. Loving and listening and responding to God and to each other. And this is what God has wanted from the very beginning, from creation. When we read in Genesis about the Holy Spirit hovering over the face of the waters, and then God the Father, through the Word, God the Son, creating all of creation, which then culminates in what? The creation of Adam and Eve, and man and woman created together in the image of the Trinitarian God. Created to be in communion with each other and to be in communion with God, walking together in the garden there, dancing together, this imagery of the dance. That, that actually comes out of the ancient church fathers, used this word called perichoresis, which talked about the dance of the Trinity in the way that I'm talking about this morning. And this is why God called Israel into being in the Old Testament. He wanted to have an entire people, a whole nation, that was going to be in communion with him and in communion with each other. And this holy communion with Israel is established, defined, and upheld by the covenant that's given at Mount Sinai that we heard so graphically described in the reading from Hebrews. At Mount Sinai, this is when God the Father says these amazing words to Israel. Now, therefore, if you will indeed keep my covenant... There's that covenant. You shall be my treasured possession among all peoples. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Communion with God. Communion with each other. We will dance together, says Yahweh. And the other nations will look on and they will see it and they will long to join in this dance. Look at Israel, the other nations will say. This is what life is supposed to be like. That was God's intent. And the covenant that he gives at Sinai establishes, defines, and upholds this divine communion. And that brings us back to Pentecost. Because as many of you probably know, Pentecost was not originally a Christian celebration. It was a Jewish festival. It goes all the way back into the Old Testament to this covenant that we're talking about. The Israelites were instructed every year on an annual basis uh, seven weeks after, uh, after Passover, 50 days, that's where we get Pentecost from, 50 days after Passover, they're supposed to come to Jerusalem and bring with them the first fruits of their harvest of grain. And they're supposed to bring it into the temple. And part of that liturgy, part of that ritual of when they bring the first fruits of their harvest into the temple is that they are supposed to retell the story of God's faithfulness to Israel and then they're supposed to affirm before God and the priest that they personally have kept the covenant that God gave to them. And then after that, the covenant commands them to rejoice. And to rejoice by sharing in the goodness of God's creation with each other, with the priests, and especially with those who are lacking. With the fatherless, the orphan, the widow, the sojourner in their lands. That's the Feast of Pentecost. That's what's supposed to be happening. And that's actually what is happening in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 2. That's why these Jews from every nation are gathered together in Jerusalem is to do this. To present their first fruit offerings. To retell the story of Israel. To remember the giving of the covenant. And even to remember and acknowledge how Israel has broken the covenant. And they're suffering the consequences. They still see it all around them right then. After the exile, the glory of the Lord, the presence of God never returned to the temple. And there is still deep division within Israel. And they're under the th thumb of Rome. They're being oppressed. All of this is evidence to them that God has not yet forgiven them. And the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of God's presence has not come to them. And so they're not enjoying or expressing the holy communion that God had intended for them to express and to enjoy. And so this is what they're celebrating. This is what they're doing 50 days after the, uh, after the Passover, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. And then they hear this sound like a mighty rushing wind. 
And they all come running to see what's going on, and that's when they hear the disciples speaking supernaturally in a range of languages, telling of God's mighty deeds. And then they hear this sermon from Peter saying that forgiveness for that broken covenant and the gift of the Holy Spirit, both of those are now given through this Jesus whom they crucified, and God is now raised from the dead and is now ascended and sitting at the right hand of the Father. And he's poured out forgiveness and the Holy Spirit. And what's the evidence of this? Acts chapter 2, what we read, that last part that Paul read for us. Those who received Peter's word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And all, did you notice how Paul emphasized all these ands that are going on here? And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, and all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling all their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need, and day by day, attending the temple together, and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Pentecost, reborn. Israel, reborn. Look at Jesus' followers dance. Dance the dance that God had intended for them to have. This is what life is supposed to look like. Communion, a new, a new covenant with the Father that was also mentioned in Hebrews. This new covenant with the Father that's now established, defined, and upheld through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not dependent on our striving, but through Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is what the church was created to be. And it's what humanity was created to be. And it's a visible expression of being created in the image of the triune, invisible God. And y'all, this is so important for our North American culture today. This is what I've been thinking on throughout the week especially. Because essential to understanding what it means to be human, that's a lot of what we're talking about in our culture today, about our identities. What does it mean to be human? What does it mean for us to live together, to be together? Well, essential for our understanding of what it means to be human is understanding our Creator. And our Creator is revealed in Scripture and in Creed as an eternal, interpersonal, divine community, distinct yet unified, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, loving and listening and responding to each other. And so being created in the image of a triune God means that we are created for community. We cannot be fully human, as God intended, apart from communion with God and communion with others. And we can't have this communion as God intended apart from the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives. And we can't have the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives apart from forgiveness to clear away all the things that obstruct, that stand in the way of God's presence and work in our lives. And we can't have forgiveness apart from Jesus. That's why what happens at this table every Sunday is called Holy Communion. By the Holy Spirit, we are united together to participate with Jesus in His communion with the Father. We enter into the dance by the body and blood of Jesus. And it's at that moment, week to week, that we get to experience together the answer to Jesus' own prayer that we heard and read in John's Gospel this morning. Jesus praying, I ask, Father, that those who believe in me may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So that the world may believe that you have sent me. You know, one of our greatest gifts to our neighbors and our nation in these days is when we, as Emmanuel, when we live together as God intended. 
living out what is established, defined, and upheld here at this table week to week, living it out in our lives. There is this deep hunger in our culture right now for communion, for connection and community, for people to be able to experience love and listening and responsiveness. But what happens when we pursue communion apart from what we are created to be, and this is what's happening not only in our cultures, but cultures across the world, but when we pursue communion apart from what we were created to be, image bearers of the triune God, the result is a collapse into narcissism, a preoccupation with the self, my rights, my liberty, my, li my life, my pursuit of happiness. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> this individualistic source of brokenness and division that is running rampant in our culture and our nation today. Those words that I just read, that's how theologian James Torrance describes the sickness of a humanity disconnected from the life within the Trinity. And it's a sickness that can even if infect the church when we forget who we are, when we forget our Trinitarian roots. The cure, Torrance says, is a return to the forgotten Trinity, to an understanding of the Holy Spirit who delivers us from a narcissistic preoccupation with the self to find our true being in loving communion with God and one another, to hear God's call to us in our day to participate through the Spirit in Christ's communion with the Father and His mission from the Father to the world, to create in our day a new humanity of persons who find true fulfillment in other-centered communion and service in the kingdom of God. I love that quote. This is our call, Emmanuel. And it's why we need the Holy Spirit to empower communion with God and communion with each other. I've been with you for one year now, <laughs> and I know I've seen how much and how well you love each other. And my family and I, we've experienced that love and your love for us in many, many different ways. And yet I'm convinced that the Holy Spirit is ready to break new ground in us and our relationships with each other, teaching us to dance more closely together not just for our own sake, but also for the sake of our neighbors and for our nation. We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And so I'm asking the question, how will this new ground be broken in us? People who have lived together for so long, many of you have been in relationship for decades, <laughs> but there is newness that the Lord wants to bring into our relationships. And how is that going to happen? Well, I think it's going to happen as together and on our own each we ask the questions, what at this point in our life together is inhibiting closer communion with each other? Or another way of asking this, where do you sense blocks or fear or distance or resentment in your relationships, particularly here within our congregation and at home as well? And that's not to be a place of trying to shame anyone or to shame you or to break up fear and wondering how are we going to deal with this? No, because these places where you are sensing blocks or fear or distance or resentment, those are the very waters where the Holy Spirit is hovering, ready to create and empower communion. And what opens the door for the Holy Spirit to enter into those waters is the Trinitarian dance of loving, listening, and responding first to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and then to each other. The biblical words for this are prayer. <laughs> prayer is a form of communication and listening to God. And We don't pray to each other, but the, the communication and listening to each other. Repentance is part of that responsiveness of what we're called to do, what in our relationships needs to be changed, to be broken, to be repented from, and forgiveness. Isn't this what we just saw Peter preach about in Acts? You want the Holy Spirit to come? It comes through forgiveness. It comes through repentance. They came in a response to 10 days at least, if not longer, of prayer of the disciples gathered together in Jerusalem before Jesus pours out the Holy Spirit. 
I think this is our calling in this season, is for us to be praying in this way and attentive to what the Lord wants to do to make communion even more of a deeper reality in our community of Emmanuel. Jesus died for this. He died for holy communion. So what relationships in your lives need the inbreaking of the Holy Spirit so that we can dance together? Let's ask our Trinitarian God to do this work in us. That as our mission outpost over on Holy Road is being built and made ready to welcome us, we also will be made ready to invite and welcome others into the dance of the Trinity. I offer this to you in the name, actually, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and John, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and the people of our diocese, especially Church of the Messiah and Church of the Redeemer, and for our congregation, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, especially our missionary partner, Yvonne, and our partner churches in Bolivia, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our President Joe, our Governor Ralph, and our Board of County Supervisors, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those serving in the armed forces or in harm's way, especially Thomas, Steve, Austin, Bo, Jean, John, Devon, Linnea, Bryce, Gavin, Christy, Evan, Dylan, Andrew, Gerardo, Andrew, and Josh. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the generous gift of the property on Hoadley Road, the Lord's blessing and wisdom for its development, and the creation of a mission outpost for, that brings him honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all whose lives are closely linked with ours, especially Bob and Marlene, B.B., Scott and Barbara, Mike, Penn, and Kevin, 
Greg, Evangeline, and Suna, Karen, Mari, and Ann, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially June, George, Darlene, Randy, Tom, Jim, Jacob, Jenny, Barbara, Marlene, Al, Vivian, Charlie, Jack, Helmut, Lisa, and all those suffering from COVID-19, are there others for whom we should pray? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those requests which are known to you alone, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you are able, um, as we, we're going to take a moment to pause here on this Memorial Day weekend uh, to honor and to remember uh, those men and women who, as we will pray in just a moment, in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties that we now enjoy. And so I invite you in this moment to remember those that you know um, that have given their lives uh, for the sake of our nation, uh, and then we'll join together in this, uh, this prayer. And yes, you may speak those names out loud before the Lord and his people. And let's pray this together. O King and Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our armed forces who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Let us humbly confess sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Please greet one another with a sign of the Lord's peace. Greetings to you. Peace be with you. <laughs> Thank you. 
have a number of announcements that I, I want to go through with you this morning uh, relatively quickly here. Um, one, I actually just want to acknowledge, is it Karen, it was wonderful to have you up here reading. Rich, it's great to have you on the Cajon one more Sunday <laughs> this week. We honored them last week, but this is the last Sunday that they will be with us today. We love you guys, and they're going to miss you a lot. So be sure you get a moment to, to greet them a- after the service there. Um, and uh, let's see. Just a word, if you haven't read my pastor's corner from this previous week, as well as the, the guidelines as far as the changes we're making uh, via, uh, concerning the easing of COVID restrictions, I encourage you please to do that. All that information is also available on the website if you didn't get a chance to see the email or you haven't received the email. Uh, the restrictions we're easing, we're taking this gradually as we go. Uh, there are, as we were praying this morning, you know, there are a lot of us that are, yeah, like... Uh, <laughs> Big and Sally flinging the mask off <laughs> on Sunday last week. There are others that this is still, I mean, and you probably have felt this if you've gone into a store without your mask and you're like, actually, suddenly I feel very uncomfortable and exposed and I'm not sure if this is okay. There are a number of us that are still feeling some of those things and also that still have some health concerns or have other ways of, of understanding, of talking about the vaccination. So we're trying to be gradual and grace filled in all that we're doing regarding this. And so June, for the month of June, we're going to be trying out these new changes that we're doing right now, and then we'll reevaluate, uh, the vestry and I together will reevaluate how we'll move forward after, after July. Keep extending grace to each other in this time. Um, one thing that's looking after July and down the road a bit, some of you have begun to hear this, I'm just going to say it out loud. Uh, we are, uh, the first Sunday after Labor Day, we're going to be returning to Bevel um, for our worship. <laughs> yes. Um, I know you're going to miss these pillars um, because <laughs> you still will have to see me fully even without a mask now. But yes, we're going to be returning to Bevel. We're going to stay here through the summer. Um, they're still working and finishing construction a- at Bevel. And they said, please wait until after Labor Day and then come. And then we'll, so we'll be returning after Labor Day. And that's going to be saving us money. I know it's like a homecoming for many of y'all to be going back there. It's also going to, we're going to be able to open back up for having children's ministry again. Um, so we're looking forward to all of that. Yes, I saw Shay. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so that's coming. Uh, beyond the, we'll give more news as the time comes. I will say that means set up folks. We need you back in gear in a whole new way. Those of you who haven't been on the setup team, it doesn't have to be a guy thing only, by the way. <laughs> You'd be welcome. We need help on setups once. Um, we need it now, but especially when we return to Bevel as well. Um, three other things just to mention here at the end. Uh, one, if you take your bulletins and turn to the very back page here, we're going to start printing this uh, every week in the bulletin on that, that very last page. Um, the, these priorities and practices that we're holding before the community that the to cultivate in us uh, in this next year and probably the years to come. Adventurous thinking, creative connecting, intentional diversity, reflective listening. If you'll pay attention, all of those actually came up in my sermon in one form or another because these arise out of the practice of the Trinitarian dance that we're invited into. So we're going to keep these before you and they'll keep popping up in different ways. And then you'll also notice at the bottom that we've listed the vestry. And two things you'll notice in that list of the vestry is that, as I mentioned, the pastor's corner, now that Rich is moving on and has stepped down from his role as senior warden, on Sunday I appointed and the vestry unanimously affirmed uh, Alan Clark to be our senior warden to carry us through the remainder of... Yes, you can applaud. Paul started. (laughs) Thank you, Alan, for that. Uh, just as I mentioned in the, in the email, as I was praying about it, just in this transition, his faithfulness to Jesus and his prayer life, those actually were two of the things that stood out the most for me, as well as his experience and his life within the community, just seemed a really clear uh, godly choice to, to help come alongside me to, to lead us into, um, into January 2022. You'll also notice that we're missing a name down here. We're supposed to have one more vestry person. So we're in the process. The vestry's role is to nominate and to bring someone in to to fill out the remainder of Rich's term. And we're in the process of, we've got a couple of names before us. We're discerning and praying. You can pray with us as we invite um, another person to step into that role. More details as we have them about that. Um, Final two things. 
laying a foundation of prayer. We have our last, won't be our last one, but our next opportunity today. Those of you who want to meet me in the parking lot of Cole at 12 noon, even those of you that are at home, if you'd like to drive there and meet us at 12 noon in the parking lot of Cole's Elementary, we'll pray briefly in the parking lot and then just take one lap in cars <laughs> um, in this wide circle around the property, and then you'll head off on, on your way home, praying in our cars as we go. Also, we have on the table on your way out the door rocks and sticks and plants, things brought from the property by others who have prayed on the land for you to take home with you so you can continue laying a foundation of prayer and have something in hand to pray. Uh, There are prayer guides on the table as well. Those of you that at home that aren't coming into Grace, send an email to office at iachurch.org if you'd like us to send you one of these rocks or sticks. We'd be happy to do that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we would. <laughs> I know it sounds odd, but we will. Uh, the final thing I just want to mention, just as I was re- reviewing the bulletin one last time on Sunday, I mean Thursday, I think, and I was looking at our music, we're doing a new song this morning that you'll find. Um, and it's actually going to come first rather than the uh, uh, When Peace Like a River. We're going to do the song Make Us One. Uh, as I was reading through it, I hit this line, and on Memorial Day weekend, it kind of stood out to me, and I just wanted to clarify it for you. For all the war, I'm on page 17 if you're looking, for all the wars and violence against our enemy, come heal our land with your great river, restore the family, and make us one, make us one. What that line is actually referring to, I listened to some interviews with the songwriters, it's referring to the internal wars and violence happening within our nation there. So when you're singing that, it's, this is a prayer for healing from the deep division and pain and literal violence and wars that we've seen going on in our nation in the past, particularly in recent days. This song was written in response to the deep division that our nation has experienced over the past couple of years. So that, that's what's at work there. It's important that our, our theology and our understanding is correct in the music that we sing, right? All right. Let's continue on now birthdays. in our worship. Oh, our birthday prayers. I even had that supposed to be first before <laughs> the announcement so I wouldn't forget these things. Yes. Let's continue now in our worship by praying for those who have birthdays <laughs> and anniversaries this week. Anyone here at Gray's with that? We've got Shay in the back. We've got the Harpster. Oh, no, it's Tira's birthday that just happened. Yes. The Greens uh, have an anniversary that's here. Yes, John Morlu, got a birthday over here, great. And those of y'all that are at home will pray for you as well. Extend your hands in these directions. And I'll pray for those at home, and let's pray together on page 11. Watch, Watch over, over your, your children, children, O Lord, Lord as their, as their days, days increase. increase. Bless, Bless and guide, guide them wherever, wherever they, they may be. be. Strengthen, Strengthen them when they stand. stand. Comfort, Comfort them, them when discouraged or sorrowful. And raise them, them up when they, they fall. fall. And And in in their their hearts, hearts, may your peace, which which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through through Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, let your light so shine before others, so that they may see your good works and glorify, give glory to your Father who is in heaven.
Please stand with me. We're on page 15 in your bulletins. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, who with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of substance. For that which we believe of your glory, O Father, we believe the same of your Son and of the Holy Spirit without any difference or inequality. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. Those of you at home that have uh, the host, you may take that in hand now. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Those of you at home with the host, receive the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Those of you that are here, we're continuing on with our receiving communion in the way that's become our, our custom in these days. You'll come down the middle of the aisle, uh, and if you hold out both your hands, uh, Deacon Sally or I, we will take the, the, the host and intinct it on your behalf, dipping it in the water and getting off the, the water, <laughs> the wine, and getting off a little bit of it. Um, so that it doesn't drip and place it into your hand for you to receive the body and blood of Christ that way. Uh, if you would prefer just to receive the bread, one hand across your chest communicates that to us. Two hands lets us know that you'd just like to receive a blessing at this time. Come to the table of grace. Join in the dance.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood 
of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, by his Holy Spirit working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Our Father everlasting, the all creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is Again, for I believe.
Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.